Lindsay Kemp est un mime génial qui joue, danse, chante, vit et rêve. Son parcours est des plus singuliers. Pendant des années, sa mère l'a obligé à endosser le rôle de sa sœur morte prématurément, jusqu'à ce qu'il trouve enfin son identité en tant qu'homme et en tant que mime. Théo Echtu présente une nouvelle conception du documentaire, intégrant à la vidéo un grand nombre d'éléments stylistiques. Il trace le portrait du mime au moyen d'images expérimentales. Cette vidéo a été produite en Italie. Our story begins with Mary Gilmore, a strong-willed and highly strung girl from a severe Scottish family living in South Shields, County Durham. In 1930, she married Norman Kemp, a vivacious, good-humoured naval officer, who, however, was kept by his duties for ten months of the year on the other side of the globe. Considering the solitude this imposed on Mary, it was fortunate that the couple had early on had a daughter, Norma, who, as she grew up, soon acquired something of a local reputation as a child prodigy. She could sing, she could dance, she could do anything. At the age of five, Norma died suddenly of meningitis, and Mary was plunged into a near hysterical state of depression. I used to be sitting in the cemetery, pouring of rain, and, and, and it, it was nearly killing my mother as well. After several months, it was decided that the only hope of shaking her out of her emotional crisis was for her to have another child. This entailed a minor gynecological intervention to coincide with her husband's leave from the Navy, thus enabling her to bring into the world a new reason for living, a substitute for the dancing daughter. And so, on the 3rd of May, 1938, Everybody, how do you do? If you're all happy, 
then me all happy too. Me only a puppet, but me very gay. And just for fun, me put on this play. Conceived as a replacement for his dancing sister, Lindsay wasted no time. He was born with St. Vitus's dance. The cure prescribed for this ceaseless twitching, restlessness and hypersensitivity was that the infant should be kept away from all stimulation and excitement. And so, for the first eight months of his life, Lindsay lived in a room where silence, stillness and darkness reigned. Years later, tragedy struck again. Norman Kemp's ship, HMS Patroclus, was torpedoed and sunk, and Norman did not figure among the few survivors. Mari had only Lindsay to cling to. We can imagine with what intensity. And so Lindsay grew up, having to be for her not only a replacement for the entertainer daughter, but also for the sailor husband. A demanding combination of roles, indeed. I didn't want him to go on stage. Don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. The profession is overcrowded, and the struggle is pretty tough. And admitting the fact she's burning to act, that isn't quite enough. I says, you're going to see, you know. I says, you're going to go in your father's footsteps. And don't forget, he was a gentleman, too. And I used to drag that into him, you know. Don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. Though they said in the school of acting she was lovely as a begin. Don't you think an enjou role would emphasize the screen? Oh, don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. It's a terribly hard profession. So I took to going to school wearing my kimonos and carrying my fans. The principal at my school constantly sent notes to my mother saying, Mrs. Kemp, please don't send Lindsay to school wearing a kimono. The education that really counted for Lindsay took place during his visits to the Christmas pantomime, the music hall, the theater, and the local cinema. Whatever he had seen, he would immediately perform himself in his own often unrecognizable version.
by pretending to be others, he could most thrillingly be himself. And he would passionately embrace any fantasy that could transport him away from the cold, grey, terraced houses of North Yorkshire, where even a first distant glimpse of classical ballet on someone else's television could open up a whole new world. And there was this blue-white glow through the neighbor's lacy curtains and peering through the curtains. There she was. The enchantment that I experienced that evening has always been with me. Shoes didn't interest me until I saw the red shoes. Firstly, there's mass scene with the, the shoes and Mara that and then finally, no longer able to resist, she runs and leaps into the shoes and of course the ribbons. They, they, I, I still haven't managed to do that trick. I guess I practiced with my with my bedroom slippers, driving my mother crazy upstairs. You know, because of the banging. Mr. Punch is a jolly good fellow. His suit is all orange and yellow. He drinks and likes to get mellow, but only among his good friends. His money most freely he spends to live and grow fat. He intends with the girls. He's a rogue and a rover. When he's dead, it's only all over. Till then, he live upon clover. And there but just comedy ends. And that is pretty much the story of my life in, 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 a, in a few stanzas. One day, a new model appeared for life class at the Bradford College of Art, very different from the flabby ladies who'd preceded him. Jack Burkett. Isn't she lovely? She couldn't be sweeter. She's so nice. We could almost eat her. What do you want with me, Mr. Punch? What do you want with me, Mr. Punch? What do you want with me, Mr. Punch? Me, like a little kissy. Mm How -hmm. oh. do you like that for a kiss, Mr. Punch? Would you be after another? He decided that my name looked awful and that we had to change it. So he began to look through these books of old Victorian music halls and posters, and he said, why don't we call you the Terpsichorean Marvel? I said, but that, it's, it's very nice, but it has to have a name. It's, it just, that's not my, it's not a name, Lindsay. He said, well, I love the Terpsichorean Marvel. And I said, well, let's look again. So he looked again, and he's, he found this, um, the incredible, he's, it was actually the incredible Orlando. And it must have been an acrobat or a dancer, or a juggler. There you are. He's just like his daddy. Feed him well, and no paddy waddy. <laughs> Isn't he a bonny lad? No, you don't need a line there. Isn't he a bonny laddie? And well hung, a humped, just like his daddy. At first, I, I, I thought he was a bit mad. And uh, I thought he didn't like me. Shall we throw him out of the window, children? Yes! Yeah. Eh, shall we? Yeah! OK, that's the way. That's the way. That's the way. That's the way. I think he's got his bad moments, like everyone. But I, I accept them. Where's the baby? The baby? The baby. The baby! The baby! The baby! The baby! He accidentally dropped him out of the window. Accidentally! Ah. If you take it personally, then 
you're, you're defe defeating the, the, the object, the purpose of the scene. You nasty, horrible man! If you're having a fight, you have to have a fight. I'll teach you to accidentally throw my baby accidentally out of the window accidentally. Take that oh, and that 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 I don't care when he takes me in his arms. They told me never to accept sweets from strangers, but I always did. I always followed and found myself in marvelous places. And if they were awful, whether they were memorable. Sail across the sea 
Over the years, my role has been to provide a kind of bridge between the world of Lindsay's imagination and the concrete practicalities of the everyday world. This juggling of realities has never been simple, especially when we perform together. Our onstage and offstage stories inevitably overlap, sometimes painfully, such as when, performing Salome during a period of tension between us, we often used to almost come to blows during the scene where he grabs my severed head by the hair. Salome's ecstatic fury was unbearably real. So was my pain. We always imagine ourselves at the very beginning to be standing on the tip of a mountain, you see. Should we just take our hands here? It's a dangerous, precarious place. Whoops! You could lose your balance. You have to risk losing your balance constantly. So it gives the dancers excitement, its thrill. Circus! Dangerous place to be. I am light. Dum, bum, shining, shining, more, 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 I am light. Yeah, but what about the windows of your soul? They're all clouded over, they all need cleaning, you need window cleaners. It's here, from here, the sun rises and escapes, here. Stop time like in a dream, you see, as if you are flying. Long enough to be photographed. Ta da! Up here, I could stay here forever. Suspended high, high, high in the clouds. You don't write a script, but the story ev evolves. Ta! Not this and that and these and that here. Oh dear, it's usually a disaster. Let the music be your dancing master. I try to remind them of their genius of their genius, which they might have forgotten. I encourage them to be spontaneous, to move in such a way that they can feel a kind of communion with God. Down here! Direct it, you see, not to the, the light, yeah. but to the woman, the women, the men, the public. 
And when you're ready, ladies, when you got what you want, when you have captured your victim, it's mutual anyway, isn't it? <gasps> Dong! Dion. How beautiful you are! Wow, baby! How beautiful the world is tonight! I like you, I really. And Chamberlain, I really like you. Wow, I'll see you after school. Goodbye. <laughs> it needs that simple story. It should be sensational. It should feel sensational. The more you give, the more you get. Death will shortly take us. Wait for life. Hang on to it. Stop time. You can do it. Look. My heart. For you. Finally, the night of the performance itself. Makeup is a long and complicated process for any kabuki actor, but especially so for the on Nagata. The actor is expected to develop his own trademark by devising some unique appeal, for example, in makeup or costume. Hello, five minutes. I'm never so late. Is there a chance of another five minutes? I'm never so late. I'm sorry, I've got something in my eye. I'm Lanny Blander. It is the custom that not even veteran actors dress themselves. The transformations he achieves are astonishing. But the word interpretation falls short of what the Onnagata is trying to achieve. His role is not merely to portray beautiful women. It is to transcend that beauty and create on stage a vision of the ideal. I'm so used to you now. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Okay? Oh. I love you. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye.
for me the most joyful moments on the stage ever the moments when I weep on the stage at the end of the play not only when I feel the love of a public but when I feel that the public have believed me <laughs> But it wouldn't be make-believe if you believed in me Yes, it's only a canvas sky Hanging over a muslin tree But it wouldn't be make-believe if you believed in me Without your love it's a honky-tonk parade Without your love It's a melody played in a penny arcade It's a Barnum and Bailey world Just as phony as it can be But it wouldn't be make-believe If you believed in me Say it's only a paper moon Sailing over a cardboard sea But it wouldn't be make-believe If you believed in me Yes, it's only a canvas sky Hanging over a muslin tree But it wouldn't be make-believe If you believed your love It's a melody played in a penny arcade It's a Barnum and Bailey world Just as phony as it can be But it wouldn't be make-believe if you believed in me I never heard of such a thing. But there's one great advantage in it. That one's memory works both ways. And I'm sure mine only works one way. I can't remember things before they happen. <laughs> also, in my, to add that in my relation as a woman with him, he's a gentleman. He is absolutely one of the most incredible gentlemen I've ever found in my life. Everything that we feel and the more things that I feel for him outside of the stage and that maybe I'm embarrassed to say or I can't. On the stage it is possible to show them and say them and explode them.
stick this great bull neck out constantly. And I do fall from time to time. My death escapes from me when I'm on the stage. And when I'm on the stage, I'm terribly aware of it. a real tantrum or another again, attempt to entertain. And then the second thing is how we can speed up getting into the, the, costume. the costume. Well, this is uh, Pasquale's job. Right. right. But getting the knickers on quick is much more difficult than getting them off quick. Well, should we just rehearse that? Just for keep future? getting them off. We, can we just rehearse that change? Mm -hmm. They just got a twist more, more and more and more and more. Don't get your knickers in the twist, Mrs. Worthington. Don't get your knickers in the twist. I'm springing back, but that's my life story. People are always amazed that I've somehow managed to come bouncing back again. I'm very lucky. I'm sent to walking on air. I'm not wary of Was I all right? You were wonderful, Luke. Well, thank, thank you. you.